Okay, so let's talk about advertising. Quick question first. How many bars of chocolate do we have to melt to get that perfect chocolate shot for the camera? You know which one. The one with the whirlpool of chocolate from which the glorious bar pops out? Well, none. That's right, not even one. Because it's actually made of paint, that is the chocolate, and the chocolate bar is made of acrylic. Now, I discovered this very early in my career in advertising, and uh, I was like, how clever. But it also told me something about the nature of making ads. We are constantly trying to transcend reality by telling a story in a way that everyone should believe. And trust me, people do. Hi, my name is Kopal Nathani, and I'm one of the now not so few female ad filmmakers in the country. And I'm here to talk about the fine craft of ad filmmaking. Now, honestly, I don't know if I can give you a larger worldview on it, but what I can definitely do is talk about my understanding of it through my own personal journey. So I come from a small town called Daridun, and my only ambition back then was to get the hell out of there. Now, I would love to tell you that I always dreamt of being a filmmaker, I had my own camcorder, I made my own birthday videos, and everyone said, Kitty creative hai, she'll become a filmmaker one day. But no, no such exciting story. My parents were regular middle class uh, people. Like most Indian families, we loved Bollywood. We grew up on Bollywood. They were not into books, not into music. So in short, no, I was not from an arty background, so to say. In fact, I came into uh, the industry quite by accident. I was in uh, Delhi, I was doing my college over there and came across a short 15-day uh, course on film appreciation. And uh, that, I think, was the turning point for me. I saw all the masters of cinema and my mind was blown. I was like, wow, I need to do this. I mean, making films, this is life, you know. So, um, so yeah, that's where, it, that's where it started. But um, I didn't know how to go about it. I was not connected to the industry. Back in the day, things were very, very different than they are today, of course. My parents were, of course, uh, initially quite opposed to it, but somehow I managed to convince them and got work uh, on a film in Hyderabad. But once the film was over, I was back in Delhi and quite jobless. Now, as you all know, Bombay was and is the hub of filmmaking and there were very few opportunities in Delhi. But somehow I managed to get a job in an advertising production house. Now, I did not think of advertising as serious filmmaking and for me this was just a stepping stone till I get into the real deal which is film, you know. I mean, how tough is it to get a little girl to dance under a waterfall with a soap and all of that, you know how it is. But um, as I started working in it, at each step, advertising kept surprising me with its deception and cleverness. I remember during one of my first uh, commercials, we had to show the magic power of a bleach on a white shirt. And uh, the young intern that I was, I went to like an enthu cutler asking everyone on the team, should I wash this shirt in the product? And they all started laughing. And they were like, this is advertising. I in a crisp white shirt, hang it and we'll shoot with that. I was like, what? I mean, I felt so cheated by advertising. But then at the time I said, theek hai, this is just a temporary affair. And eventually I'm going to make movies. So um, I constantly kept looking for jobs in films. But nothing worked out and I continued working on commercials, you know, I needed to work of course. But initially I did feel extremely stuck in it. But then again, just being on set and seeing the energy and effort everyone puts behind making the film alive, be it just for 30 or 15 seconds, is uh, what kept me going. And I gradually started appreciating the finer nuances of advertising, the storytelling and the craft. A couple of years later, when I shifted to Bombay, I happened to meet a young filmmaker at a get-together. She had just made her first feature film and the general discussion in the group was about how quick and easy advertising was. And she went on to say that, you know, advertising directors, they can't make films. 30 seconders making 90 minutes. Yeah, right. I mean, it's a world of difference. I didn't say anything. I mean, I was, of course, I was listening. I didn't say anything. But um, I got a little possessive about advertising at that point. I thought if only they knew what all we put into every single frame. If only uh, they could see that it is in those 30 seconds we create a story, um, a little film, or at least <clears throat> a scene in its own little way. 
and talk to lakhs of people and that takes a hell of a lot of skill. So I think uh, by then for me, I had started seeing advertising as a worthy art form. So what is advertising? Sure, at face value it's selling something. But in its form as a filmmaking craft, it's pure storytelling. Now if I asked you to make a short video of 30 seconds with a setup, a problem, a solution and a happy ending and have an emotional graph at that and have an elaborate product window, you would think I'm crazy. And yet that is exactly what advertising is. 30 seconds to make an impact on the viewer's mind, to break down their mental barriers, to convince them to transcend their own thinking and to pick your product instead. People ask me, what is it that you advertising people do? I mean, you get a script and you shoot it. But to realize what an ad filmmaker truly does, you have to see the script in its original form to its uh, final output. And that is the greatest challenge an advertising director faces, is to actually how to own the script, make it your own, so to speak. Unlike film and web, as ad filmmakers, we don't actually write the script. Instead, we have to reinvent a script which has come to us in its final stage. That is after multiple levels of client, agency changes, approvals, and let's not forget market research, focus groups, etc., etc. So now, when you are presented with something like this, how do you own it? How do you make it something which excites you while staying true to the brand ideal? And that is the thrill of advertising. I mean, sure, I can shoot it the way it was written, but what sets you apart as a director? Well, by bringing something of yourself in it, to give it vision, and that's when you draw from life. And when you layer that into the script, that's when the magic happens. A few years back, we were shooting a commercial and uh, there was a sequence in it where this lady was, it was set up in a middle class household and a lady was sitting on the dining table and talking to camera. We were shooting in a real home and there was very little scope to do art direction. So we were kind of scrambling around looking for things to put and, you know, making it look real. So, I mean, as we do our advertising. When I suddenly saw Patila and a childhood memory came to me. My mum used to cool boiled milk in the Patila on the dining table. And uh, so we just picked it and put it there. A small touch, nothing to think about. And we moved on. We shot the commercial. When the ad released, it, and this particular ad went viral also, like quite crazily. And uh, a friend of mine called me and saying, you know, how she loved the ad. And, uh, and she said, you know, and she remarked, she said, uh, that touch of the patila on the dining table was lovely. And it reminded her of her own childhood. So um, somebody did notice, right? <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was nice. I mean. The big glory is great, but it's not always just that. I mean, okay, ad goes viral, agency loved it, client loved it, great. But when people notice these small details, it makes it that tiny bit more um, special, you know. So, um, what sets ad filmmaking apart from any other form of filmmaking is the nuancing that goes into our work. Advertising essentially is a series of moments and literally every second matters in terms of performances, actions, dialogue, setting. One must look at the fact that a lot has to be said in that single moment. Now, for example, if I have to show a young girl proud, I don't have the luxury of three or four shots to give, bring that out. So what would you do? So, you know, in that one shot, you'd say, have a little tilt to the head, look ahead, low angle camera. And all of this would create a stronger body language. I mean, it's a small detail, but in a very subconscious way, it, it will push the viewer to see it how you want them to see it. So your eye uh, for detail is everything. There is no luxury of time. And one needs to say as much as they can in as little time as possible. As a maker, all this pushes you to think how to get there. Personally, I've seen that my own observation of people has increased. I have started paying uh, attention to the finer nuances of language, you know, appreciating the value of words. A word here or there can change or elevate the intent of a dialogue. And uh, you sort of become conditioned at looking at this kind of detail, even in your day-to-day -day life. And the technical experience that the short duration of an ad gives you, it's precious. In a span of 20 days, we go from working on a script to mounting a project, which includes all aspects of pre-production. 
which is putting up a crew together, storyboarding, creating a set, casting, shooting, then post-production, editing, music, CG, etc. Because of the frequency of her work, um, I have ended up working with a range of talented technicians, cinematographers, art directors, musicians, and that too across uh, generations, from the stalwarts to the youngsters who are just coming up now, which is quite exciting actually. Now, also, each ad comes with its own different challenges and demands. And as a maker, there's always a fear of becoming repetitive. So you constantly have to push yourself to reinvent your approach and make each project look different. As a woman director in advertising, it gets both interesting and frustrating. Everyone, especially now, is getting into women-oriented scripts, so you kind of have to tread a little carefully on how you deal with it. In my own little way, I make a conscious effort to portray women as stronger individuals and not just stereotypes and also more real maybe. Even in films that don't deal with beauty products, the women have to look a certain way. They have to be beautiful, a little made up. I try to keep their look a little more natural and stay away from stereotypical portrayal. But that's not always possible. But you know, you do what you can, whenever you can of course. Some brands still have their point of view and it is what it is. So one has to be smart about picking your fights. Once uh, during a shoot, a young model, a young female model came to me and said, you know, I have a birthmark on my back and I'll cover, don't worry, I'll cover it up with makeup. And I was like, why? Leave it. It's natural, no? So she was quite surprised. She was like, wow, how is this happening? And I was like, uh, I was like, yeah, I mean, just be you. So clearly she was used to, you know, always doing that and keeping that idea of perfect beauty intact. In another uh, film, uh, which I was doing. The script opened showing three young independent working women sitting around and putting on nail polish because the premise of the film was that they were going to host a party later that evening. So when I went in for a script discussion, I told the creative team, I said, you know, we should change this. I mean, it's not like when three girls are hanging out, their only go-to thing is let's all put nail polish together. I went to a girls' school and I don't think my girlfriends and I have ever hung out and put nail polish together. I mean, the creative team and I had a good laugh about it and they too looked forward to the opinion of the director and they were like, yes, please tell us what can we do. So I suggested that, look, if they were going to have a party that evening, they'd probably be pushing the furniture around, making space for the guests and eventually that is what we did. But you can see how that tiny change of action changed the portrayal of these young women. So, you know, like I said earlier, you, when you're you don't always have to get into the big changes. Little, little details can make a, make a difference. Speaking of gender, I also want to talk a little about myself in conclusion. Breaking into advertising as a director is difficult. It is, it is flooded with directors, mostly men. There were hardly any women directors when I joined the industry. So there were very few role models for young girls at the time. As recently as 2014, on a list of women ad film directors in the country, there were only nine of us. At least nine of us, which the industry knew. I'm sure there were other younger, much, much younger ones. But yes, the, the more prolific ones, there were only nine. Now, of course, things are changing and there are many more. But the glass ceiling was real and thick. And the few women directors that were there tended to get a lot of work involving children or families, including me. At uh, one point, I actually started removing children's films from my showreel so that I would get work other than that. I, I mean, it was lovely, but I was done. <laughs> so, um, a funny incident. This was me trying to get out of uh, children's film and break into other aspects of uh, advertising. You know, in advertising, they do segregate things like style films, car films, beauty films, children's films. You know, they kind of segregate like that. So, I was trying to break, uh, break through that. She's really good with children into other um, aspects of uh, ads. I went to an agency once and I showed my work to a creative. He loved my work, but he turned around and said, he said, uh, it's lovely, but I only handle car brands. And I said, well, I would love to do a car commercial. And he was like, well, I can't give you a car commercial because you haven't done a car commercial. And I was like, how will I make a car commercial if you don't give me a car commercial? And uh, there we were, the two of us, completely deadlocked in this what comes first, the chicken or the egg conversation. And yeah, we just had that one moment like, hmm, how do we do this? <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, it can get disappointing. At the time, of course, it was a little disappointing. But the only way forward 
is to keep at it every day. And I, I try to keep that attitude and keep going at it. It's now close to 22 years since I joined the fraternity. And if you had told me back in the day that one day I would be an advertising director, I would have laughed. But here I am, 22 years later, an advertising director. I have been running my own ad film production house for the past five years. I have worked with some of the top brands of the country, won awards, still excited about each script and still hungry to learn the ever-evolving craft of ad filmmaking. And for the record, I still haven't done a car commercial, but I haven't stopped calling them either. Thank you.